আসসালামু আলাইকুম ডিয়ার ভিউয়ার্স ওয়েলকাম টু ইউথ আওয়ার আপনারা সবাইকে স্বাগত আমি ইউথ আওয়ারে মাই নেম ইজ ইসহাক আমার সাথে আজকে আছেন ওয়ান্ডারফুল গেস্ট মাই ইয়াং হিরোস ব্রাদার জাইন এন্ড শুভ হাউ আর ইউ ব্রাদার আলহামদুলিল্লাহ থ্যাংক ইউ ওয়েল গুড থ্যাংক ইউ ফর মেকিং Oh, thank you for having us. Yeah. Fantastic. Brother Jen, what do you do? Tell us. So, um, I'll give you a brief introduction. <coughs> Please uh, do. Alhamdulillah, I've been, I've been, I'm really fortunate to be here. Um, and, you know, over the past few years, I've been working a lot in the community, uh, various different projects, which, inshallah, the viewers uh, will hear a bit more about today. Um, and that's, that's quick. I'm going to keep it short for now, inshallah. Brother Shubu? Um, yes. As-salamu alaykum. My name's uh, Shahavir Shubu Hussain. Um, I run a local garage called London Grease Monkeys. Um, which we started in 2013. Wow. Um, and I'm a local activist, so I'm part of the Timeless Labour Party, and um, try to do some small charity projects um, across the borough, so that's about it really. Hey, how was Ramadan and Eid for you guys? It was actually amazing this year. Uh, for me, it was probably the best Ramadan I've had to date. So inshallah we have better Ramadans and better Eids coming up. You was running a project called um, Iftar 1000 or something. Iftar 1000. What does it yeah. mean? All right, Iftar 1000 um, was a project set up by um, Jamal Bai was our project leader. Um, we had brothers and sisters from all over London. Um, initial our target was to feed 1000 people, hence why it was called Iftar 1000. And we kept it in line with our previous projects. We done wrap up 1000 in December and we done um, Enable 1000, it was in May. Um, so it was a project to feed people in Syria, Iftar, like 1,000 people. So that was 500 parcels wow. um, to send to um, Syria. So five, one parcel is for two people. So just later on our first container, we sent 5,028 parcels. So feeding over 10,000 people. Alhamdulillah, we did three containers and we fed an extra 5,000 in eight different cities in Syria in six, seven weeks. Have you met any of those people <coughs> personally? Have you? Um, n personally, not the people in Syria. Okay. Um, but the work we did previously um, with the two projects we did, so Jamal by Raj and Jabad by they went Calais in May, um, they, where we set up 100 communal kitchens so at least 1,000 families could cook every day the aid they're receiving. Um, in December, we done a project called Wrap Up 1000. Um, we sent 24 pallets of aid and clothing uh, to the Greek islands. So that's Lesbos and Hios. Um, we were, me and one of my colleagues called Serena and Mubasha, we were out there. Um, we were in Lesbos and then from Lesbos we went to Hios. In Heos um, is where we experienced everything, um, from pulling in people uh, from that are on the boats, on the rubber dinghies, um, seeing um, the fake life jackets with our own eyes, um, helping the people, feeding the people, um, clothing the people, um, from doing wow. everything. So it's amazing stuff. You know, today's topic is we're going to talk about Eid. How does you know our young people? celebrate Eid and the issues and stuff so on. But um, just before going there, um, Brother Zayn, you know, you've done something quite amazing I was looking into. Sweet Eid. Mm. You know, special name for Eid. What do you do? Do you mean by Sweet Eid? What do you do? Okay. So I think, I think maybe, maybe if, if I start just a bit before Eid and the, okay. and the reason, the intention, just like Brother Shubo was saying, um, you know, he, he, they started off with one project, they moved to another one, and then they moved to another one. Um, and I can only imagine a huge reason for that is because when they carried out that first project as young people, um, they felt really responsible to do something for other people and for the world. Um, and then they moved on to, I think it was Wrap Up 1000, yeah. and now IFTA 1000. And I've seen, I mean, you know, as, as, a, as a bystander, um, I'm not part of their core team, but I've been involved here and there, but I've seen it grow hugely. And I think for a lot of young people, Ramadan is definitely that time. You know, it's that time where we can really um, look at ourselves and see what are we doing for the world and what can we do. And similarly uh, to uh, Shubo and Jamal's project and Brother Hassan's project, what we wanted to do as well is our, our concept was how do we put smiles on children's faces? Um, and something as simple as that, you know, I think 
you know, a lot of us, we think, you know, Eid is happy. It's meant to be happy. It's going to be happy and fun. But it's not the case. I'm sure you see it, right? I don't know if you guys know, but when I go to the 7.30 a.m. Eid prayer, I don't see a lot of smiles. You know, a lot, I see a lot of people, maybe they're tired or maybe, you know, you know, whatever it is, maybe they woke up too early. But you don't get to see that happiness. And I think, especially for the youth, I think over time we've come to believe that Eid is just going to be happy. We don't have to do anything. We can sit at home, mm. but it's not. So Sweet Eid is, an, is, a, is a project uh, that brother Abdullah Tariq, Maher and Mustafa and a few brothers came up with very, a few years ago. Um, and all they wanted to do was put smiles on the faces okay, of so children. So what do you do normally do? So you've got the sweet package. Yeah. Um, and then you go to the, who do you give it to and how do you give it? Okay, so, so what happens is, um, b just before Eid, so for example, Eid al-Fitr that just passed a few weeks ago, uh, a few weeks before that, um, the volunteers, about 100 volunteers came together to help us pack the sweets. So that itself was another day. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we had people who had autism, we had sisters, we had young brothers, we had elderly uncles, and everyone coming to help pack the sweets. Now, what happens on Eid Day is those individuals all go to separate masjids, separate centres. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of Eid in the Park this year as well, that was in various parks up and down the country. We heard about you know, Eid in the Park in Birmingham, was it 90,000? Yeah. Something like that, yeah. Some, some, 19 or not, I'm not sure exactly what number. And what happens simply is, Brothers and sisters stand outside the masjids and they give out sweets and they make balloons for the kids. So kids can come up and say, I want a, I want a hat or I want you know, a, a belt. Yeah. Um, but the, the best thing about it is you know, just that smile that you see on the children. That, you know, that's priceless. That is the concept of it, isn't it? You're going to be a happy day and enjoy your yeah. day. But uh, we also see um, in UK, especially UK, we live here, um, people are taking another level. Mm. They're hiring a car, you know, what kind of issue do you think we face in, especially in London? Because we're not outside London, so yeah. let's talk about London <coughs> first. So, what kind of issues do you think we face in the Eid day, especially with the young people under 19? We don't know where they go, how, what, do, what do you think they do? Um, Any idea? We've had situations where there's been antisocial behaviour, mm. um, young people f drinking, um, driving recklessly, people killing themselves. So it's just, I think, responsibility in the families as well to actually keep the children involved in what's happening. I think last few years, some people died. Young people yeah. died in that a crash and crash every year, definitely. Yeah. But you know, some people died as well in near um, or flyover. Bluff, and um, those are the ones we've heard about. Yeah. So we don't even know the ones you know, yeah. that we haven't heard about. I think. One thing for me on that point is I think, I think everyone has a role to play in this. Um, from our youngsters who, you know, for example, e even on some of the projects I'm in, you know, maybe I can say maybe it's partly my fault because I haven't engaged more people. For our parents, you know, we can see maybe it's our parents' fault because they haven't done more to provide more activities for the children. We can say it's uh, this person's, that person's fault. Um, but I think what we need to concentrate on is you know, what is the reason why our youth are going to these activities? You know, they have 30 days of Ramadan and they are doing such amazing projects involved in charity in terms of this and that. So what, what what's happens when Eid day they switch and they go into these activities and some of them unfortunately do end up passing away? Well, you away. know, some people say this is the unknown generation, under 16. We don't know where they go and where they end up. It's unknown. This got scary, man. You know, that word is service. Where, where do they go? We don't know. And, um, but to be in the shoe of the young people, mm -hmm. don't you think we know, as a parents, uh, I've got three kids. Mm -hmm. Mashallah. Um, as a parents, what's my rule? Mm -hmm. Because if they're isolated, they will go up to something. Have I got a plan for them? Have I got a plan for them in Eid day to give him this, take him somewhere and plan it out? Mm -hmm. Because if, if, you know, if you don't have any plans, that they're going to go out with their friends, they're going to end up in something you would, we don't want they to be. Yep. And maybe sometimes it's too late, some people don't come back home again. Hmm. So do you think you only can't blame youth, youth for, for what they do because they're isolated? Why do you think they're isolated? Well, when I was young, I remember Eid, it's still exciting, but I used to be over excited in Eid. I used to hide my clothes. Yeah, so nobody sees my clothes, so because 
eat zai bogi. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember with my family, we used to plan the day. <laughs> you sound Bangladeshi. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you sound like my age. You know, my age, we used to hide those things. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 so, I don't know if you still do, but uh, the thing is, uh, with my family, especially my mom, we used to plan where we we're going to go and stuff and who we we're going to visit. Um, it used to be exciting. As now, as in, I just do uh, go along with what my brother and my sister and that one. So we go to different families and visit everyone. And it's just trying to bring everyone together. And that is really fun. And that's this, it's, it's very important to keep uh, a strong family. And like even from your mm. uh, like second cousins and stuff. And a big gathering always works. But the point, one of the points, sorry, I just wanted to make this. You, Shubo said the word family. And I think what's really important is, you know, we have a family at home. You know, your uncle, your brother, your mum, your father, whoever it is. But these young people, you know, we have to ask ourselves, do they consider that family that family? So your question is what, you know, we don't know where these youngsters are going. So maybe this, these people they're spending time with, for them that's their family. So if we as parents, as youngsters and as brothers and sisters aren't doing our part, if we, for example, my point is, if we sit at home and say, this is Ahmad family, this is my brother, this is my uncle, this is my family, everyone else is, they can do their own thing, then we're never going to involve anyone. So our yeah. children are going to find their own family on the streets and they're going to spend more time with them and we won't know what they're doing. That's true. So I'm going to to you. You can call us, you've got a number on the screen. And talk to us live. I'm the regular bolter. See, doesn't make sense. I'm rather one of what this is. I'm the one of Bachara Shole. Either the name of the Janina Tarakuta. It's a big generational gap. I guess. One of the other by the Gia from a Gadi Salida. Some people don't come back home again. You know, I'm rather the kitchen plan now. Hori, I'm the Bible bolter and young by the bolter. J. A. Shomosha Gulam Rakila face Hori. Bahortam Bobishote. We have to plan it ahead. John Amadia Tarata Yidash to say. We don't want to lose nobody. Mm. We don't want to see people saying, why is the Muslims on the Eid day? They get mad. Ali scream, pee pee, mm. findra, you know, whatever they want to do. They're just doing anything they want. No one's there to tell them, yeah. listen, stay safe, be safe, enjoy yourself. No one asking you, but yeah. don't go into drugs, into drink, into, you know, doing other, other antisocial behaviors. This is, this is very important. Mm. But plan like okay. you said, if the family structure is not strong enough, it's only the eat day, we go home and then do Munaka um, with yeah. our brothers, yes. older brothers and the fathers and the uncles. Is he still not my brother? What's going on here? There's something going on here. There's simple things like, you know, I, I, I do, during Ramadan I had the... Um, I was very privileged to do a, a Ramadan show and a sister called in and ten questions and you know I'm in Ramadan we eat around the table and after eat we never we don't do it again so why don't we do more of this and you know your your point we we're, we're talking about parents but I think also for us youngsters uh you know if if my brother Shubo here if if I take him out into a car and one of us doesn't return home we think you know we feel sorry for the person but what we also have to imagine for us youngsters is for those for that family and that extended family, can they enjoy another Eid again? They can't. So for us youngsters, yes, we should have fun, but we need to be very careful and cautious because you know sometimes you can't control it. One slip on the road or even if they're drinking and they fall over somewhere, that's it. So we have to we have to be very careful. Yes, we should have fun, but we need to be careful, we need to plan things like you were saying as well. But what do you, can we also um, target the um, older group, my group, mm. uh, my age group? Do you, you think we're not doing enough? <laughs> do you think we left our kids in, you know, left it to them? Do you think we're not bothered about them? There are some people, either in, but because we work in the restaurant, we work in the yeah. takeaway, we have some, you know. Everyone's busy in that day. So um, the, for us it's practically we can't, you know, join the kids. For that day, for them, is quite terrible. Maybe some of the brothers yeah. they never join the Eid because Namaz Fido, they have to go to work, yeah. isn't it? So is that the, a crucial part playing so our kids are going away from the family tradition or unity or bonding? What do you think, Shabubai? Well, 
even people who are working in offices. I'm coming to you all the time because you look much younger than uh, Zane. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is? I just, I don't look scruffy today. I comb my hair. Um, <laughs> now, what it is, um, actually, we're same. Yeah, we're the same age. Um, but what it is, even people who are working in offices, many people can't get days off on Eid, especially Eid al-Fitr. We can't, we don't, we can't tell them exactly what day Eid's going to fall on. So, um, the thing is, is I was thinking about it. It's, I remember, I'm just remembering what I used to tell my little brother. What you do outside is you are representing us, not just yourself, you're representing the family. So Inshallah. when you do mess about, it's, you're not embarrassing yourself. You're going to embarrass every one of us mm. and who are even related to us. And it's more representation. So I've been working with my brother over the years. Alhamdulillah, he's a very good boy. And I've always said, remember it's always how you come out like how people see you and if people see you and you're doing good people will always like give blessings to the family so yourself and the family so always try your best to rep come out and represent you well well so this is something i was thinking we should actually try promote have you ever done Eid in bangladesh yes give me a glimpse of bangladesh Eid then um, but most of our uh, viewers if they're young they haven't been there mm. um, i haven't been to bangladesh for 20 years you know. well <laughs> so last time i did eid in bangladesh i was in bangladesh in ramadan for two weeks about three two three years ago but the last time i did eid in bangladesh was about over 10 years ago it's been a very long time okay um as from what i can remember is how old were you then me um i was 25 then yeah Wow. No, I'm joking. I'm, 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 I'm joking. Confuse me there. No, I was 15. Okay. Yeah. Um, what I can remember is even throughout the month, um, after even iftar, the shopping centers used to be hmm. busy. In busy, even um, on Eid day, the amount of people that come to my daddy's, uh, my father's house, um, unbelievable, and. This is something that we don't sometimes see in this country. It's not possible in this country yeah. because of the jobs and other places. But I mean Bangladesh, when I say Bangladesh, is, it is amazing, buzzing. It's the only day that everybody smiles and hugs you and gives you something to do and gives you a present. It gives you, you know, inspiration for next year. Honestly, it's, it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Bangladesh is a poor country, you know, not in all places, but there is, uh, we, within that limitation, can you imagine? We've seen Christmas, we've seen other things, but nothing compared to the buzzing we get in, in eight day. Everyone dressing like same style, mm. same yeah. um, food, almost same. It's, it's even in uh, a poor house, you go to there. It's amazing. He will give you something. Yeah. SubhanAllah, this is something uh, probably traditionally Muslims are grown up in that field. Mm. Like, they will not give you uh, without a smile. Or they, mm. Even if they don't have anything, they'll give you the last thing they have. Yeah. SubhanAllah, that's... That's the beauty of uh, and yeah. being faithful. One of the, you know, one of the things that I, I really strongly um, believe is, you know, when we have Ramadan, if we see Ramadan as a guest, uh, we should see Eid as uh, the reward of looking after that guest. Um, but I think, you know, your, your question was, are we, are we to blame that these young people are going and creating these other families of their own? Uh, I think partly yes. Because I think we have, um, we have removed Eid from what it's meant to be. Eid is meant to be about, what she was saying, it's about happiness, it's about spreading, it's about giving. You know, not just accepting gifts, but mm, giving gifts. Yeah, so a few questions you have to ask yourself, elder or young, is, okay, Eid day, what do we do for our neighbours? Do we visit them? Sometimes we don't. You know, some of us, we live next door to 15, 20 houses. We don't visit any of them, even whether they're Muslim or non-Muslim, Bengali or non-Bengali. Second thing, what are we doing to make our children and youth day fun? Because you know, t today we have a, um, you know, Shubo does a lot of these selfies. You know, a lot, <laughs> a lot of people take these. <laughs> You're a selfie pro. A lot of yeah. people take selfies and pictures. Why, is, why are you all pushing Shubo into these <coughs> yeah, things? That is Shubo. Why I'm, you I'm, I'm, I'm used to it growing up. <laughs> I'm, I'll get blamed for everything. Yeah. <laughs> but we do it. You know, we take pictures. Take him out for food. <laughs> yeah, you should. <laughs> yeah, I should actually. I probably owe him more. Tell him now so you'll stop. Otherwise, he's going to pull you more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right. I can handle okay. it. But we take a lot of selfies. Our youth, they want to share. They want to show their friends. This is what I did on mm. Eid. 
But if you're not doing anything with your children and you're just eating some food, that's why they're going to go out. Another thing, what do we really do in a day? Honestly, be, uh, go to pray, come home, go to mums. Is that all? Is that, is that what it means, funds? No, but we need to br bring fun in. This yeah. is something we do once in a year or you know, twice a year. And other communities, I'm talking about other faith groups that they are having brilliant stuff. When our kids see, they do it. You know, exactly. you know, they you know, uh, can't have even the right food we want to do. Mm. These kids, they, know, they don't want rice all the time. Not in the eat day, please, come on. Yeah. To be honest with you. Bring the best food they want. Give, like my kids, they're even saying, oh, I'm missing Ramadan. Some, mm. Why? Because the food was there. Yes. One of the part was food, isn't it? The other part was they were playing a role of choosing their food. Mm. So if the Eid day, Amrodi Yatu Hazaytampari, means make it into a, a presentable and exciting, not like every day, you know, then mm. I think our kids will enjoy. Atara, they will like to share it with their friends. That's what we do. And that's, that's the whole purpose, you know. Um, for those of us, you know, even for viewers who are Muslim, we're always told, supposed to adorn yourself on Eid. So clothes, food, even your house, you know, everything, we can do it. We need to make that effort. If you're not making I'm going to ask you guys something else. Like, do you think our mosque are playing a right role to encourage our young people to go to the mosque and have you know, enjoy themselves? If we're not, then they will go somewhere else. Hmm. So, what do you think a mosque can do? Just you know, just uh, talk over. Like, I, ex I always expect to say. Some people go to Eastern the mosque or others. When you go to the mosque, you would expect, like you said, sweets are there for them. It's nice. And some kind of fun, like mm. they, uh, have a tea, coffee together. The, if you can do iftar, what can you <coughs> have tea, coffee on the day? Just sharing sweets. Yeah. Um, then what happens if the parents can say, look, look, there's some special there. Why don't you go there? Have some fun, have some food. They are young people, don't have money, honestly. Yeah. Pocket might have a lot of idea. It's not yeah. like we are adults, we've got money. But younger ones, for 50 pence for them to bring mm. it out, it's difficult. If they know, yes. they will go there, brother. Yeah. They will go there. I think so, what do you think? For me, the mosques have a much bigger role to play. Alhamdulillah, some mosques, uh, I can give you one incident. Uh, there's a brother called Muhammad uh, Sadiq. We call him Amir. Uh, I remember very clearly about a year or so ago, he invited us to his masjids and they were doing sword fighting workshops in the masjid so they emptied the masjids and they had a sl slumber party you know I said like they sleep over they bring their own um, pajamas they did food they did activities they did stuff I also have heard about a few new masjids they are doing different things but I think you know I look at m one or two of my local masjids a apart from Salah they're, they're closed you know you see the shutters down and that's it so I think they've got a bigger role to play even projects like Sweetied um, even though we distribute at masjids, it is not the masjids who come up with them. So I think I think we have the mosques have a much bigger role to play, especially considering you know us we are all constantly donating to the masjids, giving our time. So I think we still have a huge role to play. We need to get to that position where the masjids are seen as places of fun, not just prayer. Uh, even it's, it's a day to celebrate with non-Muslim neighbors as well. Yes. They expect something from us. Normally, because that's the tradition, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, Christmas, well, they get yeah. something. But they expect, oh, we might get something from next door. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're having it. Oh, we don't. Usually, not everyone does that. Go on. Was so say no, I was saying, um, but I know the mosque has a responsibility. But we, as, a, mm. as people in the community, have a responsibility to help the mosque to organize events such like this. Um, I'll be honest with you, I've not done that myself. but. Um, I think if for next year uh, it would be good, like how you're doing Sweet Eid, maybe we could, um, people from different parts of the community can help put up stalls and serve tea to people. Mm. Um, to that's, our local that's, that's, that's really something special. Yeah, because um, it is morning, it's really early. How about, um, um, I don't know, that's in my head, uh, how about a trip on, on, a, on an Eid day? Maybe a group of people yeah. going from this area to another area and um, in, in this way, young people stay busy, man. We've yeah. got to keep them busy on the day. 100%. Either they're going to do good, they're going to do bad. Mostly they will do bad because they've got a lot of time. Nothing to do, bro. Yeah. And they're off, you know, from school, whatever it is. They've got a yeah. full day off. And, you know, when they're, when they're out, it's Eid day. No one's going to say to them, 
what are you doing? It's not going to be, if, if they're out partying, it's not out of the ordinary because there's dozens of other people partying. Um, so it's, it's really important, like Shubha say that we, we can't see it as, I can't say it's, it's uh, Ishak it's Bai's problem. Yeah. I can't say it's Shubha's. Yeah. I can't say, let me stay at home with my children, someone else will deal with it. Because if we all do that, then no one's out no there. Solution. That's it. Um, and you know, you were saying how even the non-Muslims, I remember that um, this year uh, I received a picture uh, of an of a English person, a brother, who, who sent a message saying, I just received this through the post from my Muslim neighbours, Eid Mubarak to everyone. Oh. And it's things like this we need to do because we forget. Um, I mm. think we have five minutes before the break. Mm. Can I ask you, I know you've been around uh, um, Kuwait, uh, Dubai and other places. How do they, have, you, have you been there in the Eid time? What do they do in the Eid, man? I haven't been to, um, I haven't spent Eid there, but Alhamdulillah, I have spent Eid in Saudi Arabia. Okay, give me some idea. Uh, wow, so I think it's very different in Saudi Arabia because um, it's, it's a day where it's not very different to other days. I'll tell you why, and the reason being is because there's so many people there. You know, there's millions and millions of people on each day. Um, but you still find that people, Alhamdulillah, people are already very nice to each other, but you see more. You see people giving out extra food, being extra nice. Um, and that's what it is. People, when they're in Saudi Arabia, they're at their best. What kind of food do they have? They have... That's one thing I'd be curious. Very dry food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, if... if, if okay, give me an example. Say you went uh, to this shack house. I'm sure it must, must be you've been mm. to one of their houses. And you, they've done this, they've done that. They give you a case and a yes. hug and the food. Give us a description so we can... So there's... Visualise ourselves. Yeah. So there's From Salah, tell us your day. Yeah, yeah, yeah go on. That's it. Okay, so... Go on, so if you're in, <laughs> I know we're going to a break so quickly. So if you're in Saudi Arabia, so me and uh, Brother Moino were there last year. Salah is very early, like this year, it was around 6 a.m., 7 a.m. Um, and then the rest, most of it, you spend um, really preparing yourself for the rest of the day. So going, you get dressed up. Uh, Food-wise, there's a lot of yogurt. You lot must go through the day. We don't know what <laughs> you did. <laughs> what I did. I don't know if we'll have enough time for that. No, we've got but, five minutes. But food-wise, a lot of rice, <laughs> yeah. a lot of chicken, a lot of dry chicken, a lot of yogurt, and a lot of milk. They love their milk. Um, for all the viewers, milk is called laban. So you go to Saudi Arabia, you just ask for Laban, and uh, you'll be fine. Or oh, Laban. <laughs> <laughs> or oh, Laban. <laughs> Don't get it wrong, you get a lot of yeah. salt. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I, I used to think maybe they, they, they usually, uh, we see things in the, in the Facebook and other places, that the whole berry they put it somewhere and they cook yeah. the whole thing and they share it and rip it off. They share. So Alhamdulillah, you know, you know when we at home, we have okay, our own do they, do they dance? Do they sing? Do they have music, anything? I, I haven't seen it. But you know, I'm sure they do. I'm sure that's their I culture, mean, isn't it? Or no? I mean, in some parts, I think. Okay. I, I think w where where I was, w it was more near Makkah, Medina. So I think. Okay, people, so these are more different. But I'm sure other places, like even even when I was in Qatar uh, with friends uh, Sean and Alia, they in Suk Wakif, which is a market, the Arabs where they were done. It wasn't it wasn't um, too too much extreme, but it was nice. It was it was good to see. It was fun. Um, and that's that we, we f that's what we forget. When we you say fun, I just want to know exact word. What does the fun mean to them? What do they do? I think we get this wrong. I think we think that. I'm not looking for a smile, you know that. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah. we want to see a practical what do they do. Because they, they genuinely ha do have fun. You know, a lot of people think a lot of these Islamic countries, they don't have fun. They do. They, they enjoy it. It's just they don't do it. For them, for them, fun isn't putting yourself in a yeah. position where you're drinking you, or you when the children are passing away. For them, fun is people together, people together sharing things, being happy, you know, being part of something that makes you happy. And mm. you can feel it, you can see it. Um, and that's what we forget. I think a lot of us mm. Asians think that we can't have fun. You know, yeah. Eid days about Salah, it's about this, that. No, it's about having fun. Um, and you'll see it. You f you'll know at the end of the day, have you had fun? If you sit at home and... Alhamdulillah, I know there are a lot of places now that even UK now, we see um, the people are playing outside in the, in, the, in, yeah. in the park. They have a um, lot of activities like, you know, festival, they yes. have, you know, jumping, yeah. um, bouncing castle. I, I saw you, Ishaq, by one of those. Oh, was I? <laughs> <laughs> was I there? So we had it in Tahamis this year, um, Eden in the park, it was in Milan Stadium. Mm. So I took my whole family. Um, like my brother, my dad's in Bangladesh. Um, I took my brother, my sister's husband, husband, and all my friends. I picked them up in the morning as well. So it was nice. Um, as mates, we all went, and when we got there, we had loads of friends and the amount of people we were greeting. Um, there's going to be an idea where my friend Hassan um, is going to be mentioning. 
Um, we, it's in the, on the pipeline, so it's just something we're thinking and hopefully we can get help from people to make our idea to come true. So I think we should do something together, maybe in the future. And yeah. also like your suit thing, I think we should go to people. Alhamdulillah, the Muslim communities are giving a lot of, lot of uh, charity, especially in Ramadan. But we need to keep some for people to enjoy on the Eid day. Eid has to be something um, happy. I mean, like I know we're yeah. saying happy, happy all the time. <coughs> But we need to prove it to our kids. Imagine 10 years old, 7 years old, 5 years old. They want gifts, man. They want... My uncle comes to me and say, Hey, my... Ah, can you imagine that? Go it. back home and say, yeah. This uncle gave me this thing. But, sorry. sorry. I was thinking, it's given responsibility as well. Young people love having responsibilities. So if you give them responsibilities for other people as well, they'll have to be role models mm. themselves. So if we do projects like a fun fair or something, we want young people to volunteer. Mm. And if we give them the uh, responsibility to help us be part of the project, you know, that's some a little solution there and it's small, it's in the community. So mm. No, that's good. Imagine um, if, if every one of us, it should be a movement like, on the Eid day I'm going to spend £10, not too much, £10 sweets. And whoever find on the way to the mosque, Buy it cheap as you can. Can you imagine? I mean, I mean, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. It's and not about what you're giving, isn't it? It's about who's giving and what it. is. And for those people, I mean, you know, maybe we don't have ten pounds. We give, you know, we give a lot of charity in Ramadan. You know, especially Brother Shubha, he'll know. Alhamdulillah, he he was telling me how so many people donated to the Iftar One Thousand Project. But give ten minutes up. You know, after you eat salah, um, there's tons of stuff that will be happening near the masjid. Give ten minutes of your time. And that's it. If you can do that ten minutes and spend it in the way of making other people smile and joy. And even that, I mean, I spent probably three hours outside Islam the Masjid this year. I probably smiled and hugged over a hundred kids, Come said salam to probably a thousand people. Did you have your longi on on the Eid day? <laughs> I saw in the I haven't, yeah. Yeah. I haven't <laughs> worn a longi. <laughs> sure, <but> did <laughs> you, have you not noticed? <laughs> <laughs> we had, so we didn't have, um, <laughs> yes, we did. I haven't worn a longi in years. I haven't worn one in Okay, what was it? <laughs> there was maybe that you had something there. Yeah. It looks like a longi. And Is I was it? saying to my, um, Kids, actually, it's a belt. It's a, gum it's it's a balloon oh. belt with a tube underneath. Oh, oh, it's more like a longi, yeah. isn't it? It's more like a um, Arab longi. Okay, we'll, we'll accept longi this, <laughs> this time. Yeah, I remember one of the brother. I think he had an um, OB or MB in the, to the going to the Queen, and mm. he was wearing longi. And yes, said, he accepted his. Yeah, I, I was what? amazed. It's wow. something uh, I wouldn't do it, but I, I have a lot of respect for that brother. Mm. Actually, this is confidence. Under, Really, really something he was proud of. That's brilliant. Mm. You know, promote your own culture. Why not? It's nothing to be ashamed of. But I think that was spot on, actually. No, it was brilliant. I did see that. Now I was thinking of going to the break. Looks like they're enjoying. So let's let's carry on. Okay, well, that's fine. <laughs> um, I was going to um, ask you, um, Shabubai, you're still young. How do you want to see our next Eid going to look like? How do you want to see it? If our viewers are seeing, of course. So give them some idea. How do you want to see next Eid? Uh, what can we do different? Um, well, this Eid, um, it was amazing for me um, from the moment uh, the day started. Um, we went prayers and then I invited my friends around to come over for breakfast. And throughout the day, we went visiting to families. And towards the end of the day, me and my friends went out for a little meal. Um, that was great Eid. And I think every time, that is probably the best thing I can do. Visit all my close friends and family, say hello to my neighbours and look good that day and smell good and that is you can't it's priceless you know it's not expensive and that and i hope to have the same eid next eid so that's the best thing i can say so you know we were talking about in the beginning actually a lot of people a lot of our young people uh, getting into trouble mm. in the day some of them into some of them into prison i know um, because they're driving a car without any license, they're driving this and driving that. They get, they collect money. Everyone gets fifty, fifty each, and they buy. Mm. Oh my God, yeah. man, it's, it's 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 crazy. So what can we do? Yeah. So they don't go in that line. What path? What, what can we do? One thing. Have you got kids? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I we so wish you. <laughs> 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 He's looking at himself. <laughs> no, no, no. And uh, one thing is, um, so next Eid, inshallah, I would like to see. Uh, more bonding families, uh, more families going out together, um, doing things together as families. Um, that will keep, keep more people off the streets, that's the honest truth. If families did work together and 
host events maybe, go out to eat, do things like that as a whole, we actually see less trouble. Mm. Wow. That's what I think. What Give us some um, uh, Arab style advice. Go on. <laughs> You're a man from Arab think, uh, where you go a lot. I think one thing, right, and this is to a lot of maybe the, the adults. You know, when we, when we are in need, let's say we, you get out of your car and you see a group of youngsters, let's say drinking or whatever, the first thing we say is, you know, or we, mm. we, we say something bad. You know, imagine every single time we saw those people and we said salam to them and we said Eid Mubarak to them. You know, imagine we changed our, our, mm. percept, our way we thought, talk, because, you know, we can go around and every time we see youngsters do bad, swear at them or do bad or do that. And you will never change, you know, and then 10 years on, we'll be like, oh, you know, yeah. we'll just keep doing that. But imagine every time we, we ourselves say, you know what, let me speak to them or let me say this. Yes, obviously, you don't have to go and stop them. It's not your duty to stop someone from, you know, doing whatever they're doing. You don't want to get into, you know, your own issue. But imagine we took that approach. So we said salam or we gave them something or, pres or something, a gift, little gift or sweets or whatever it is. That might be the reason that they think next year, you know what, I'm going to maybe stay away from here. Mm. Maybe not stand outside this person's house. Maybe not in that corner. Let me go do that. Because the, I think one of the reasons young people um, keep doing this stuff is because they don't know it. They've never had it. So how can they miss it? How can they want it? But imagine you gave them a bit of salam or, a, or that bit of love from a stranger, they'll want it more and more. And you might see them going back into their houses with their family, being part of that. You know, ev even for me, um, a few years ago, um, when, when I used to be, you know, a lot more out with the friends and stuff, you know, I didn't, you know, have that whole um, desire to be with family, friends, projects. But when I got a taste of one, I wanted it more and more, and that's that's the reason, and I think that's how we can do it. Shabubai, um, I want you, can I say one thing? Yeah, yeah. I want you to also say goodbye to our parents, uh, to our viewers, because yeah. you won't be at your next one. Yeah. You may be at the last one, but All would right. you say your last word to All our right. friends? Uh, advice. Uh, yeah. So quickly, uh, one more advice. When I was young, I used to always look at my elders, and that's what people do. Who like the, who are the role models and stuff? So people who are 16 right now, they're looking at their brothers who are 19, 20. They also share responsibility um, for the ones that are growing up right now. And you've got your old, everyone got younger brothers, nephews. So it's our responsibility to be good role models, inshallah, and you know, help them to succeed and prosper in the future. Um, thank you for watching us, guys, and that's it. Shamani Dubai Munera. আমরা এতক্ষণ শুনছিলাম আমাদের শুভ বাইকার্স থেকে এবং জেন থেকে উই লার্ন সো মাচ ফ্রম দেম দ্য ইয়ং পিপল অ্যান্ড দে আর থার্ড জেনারেশন থার্ড জেনারেশন সো ওয়াট উই আস্কিং ইউ ইজ ওয়েল আফন প্লিজ ডু কল ইন অ্যান্ড টেল আস ওয়াট টু ডু ফর নেক্সট ইড ওয়াট উই ক্যান ডু মাই বেটার দ্যান দিস ওয়ান সো কাম ব্যাক আফটার দ্য ব্রেক ইনশাল্লাহ আসসালামু আলাইকুম রহমতুল্লাহ